Hey, it's the Chief Bonnie with Board Games. We got a GMT game, Hitler's Reich. Now this is a card conquest system game. Um, I'll explain a little bit more of that before we go in and take a look at the uh, review. Uh, but I will tell you, this is like light, grand strategic with what I call World War II role playing. Because there are all these events that you all a cart get to pick and fight for. Once you have that event, you then get to choose when you're going to use it. And different events, some of them can be reused multiple times, or sometimes they're one and done and they're gone, or they can't come back till the next year. Or sometimes they're um, used once, and if you lose, it goes back in the event deck, and you're going to have to kind of fight for it. Not kind of, you're going to have to fight for it and get it back in your hand again. So, let me go in and show you what I'm talking about, why in the world would I say it's a light World War II role-playing game? Hello. All right, we're looking at the Hitler's Reich map. We've got the Germans set up to the left. We're going to have allies over to the right. You'll see that there are white dice over there. There are blue markers, red markers for the allies. You'll notice we've got... You can barely see it on my black table, but we've got black markers and fleets for the axis. And let me come up just a little bit higher. You're going to have event decks for the axis, uh, a shared event deck that covers both axis and allies, and then just the allies. Let me come back down a little bit, kind of show the play space. This is my goal here is going to be quick, simple, not a deep dive into the rule set first. Before we go further, there is a bot to play this game, so you can play solo. The bot is very clean. Um, you will, uh, you'll see the Axis bot. You'll be playing the Allies, and it'll just walk you through what you need to do off of this handy sheet. That's all I'm going to say about this, because I'm going to keep the rules explanation fairly short and concise. So role-playing, I say. Strategic level role-playing. Here's why I say it. First of all, if you start with an introductory scenario in 41, the game board's already pre-set up. All the control areas are lined out. The, uh, the uh, Nazi-Soviet pact Barbarossa hasn't happened yet. Role-playing, I say, is because you have these events that are historical in nature, but it's up to you if you're going to use them or which ones you even want to try to fight for to get. You can pick the ones you want, uh, depending on, there are a few like for the V1, V2 rockets and stuff that kick in later and you separate them out. But you're fighting over hand size, which is going to be a, uh, a victory condition as well. I will go into that right near the end. You're moving through the years of the conflict and um, the basic actions you're going to take are simple. So it's definitely World War II. The events are all World War II, but you as the player have the choice on what events you want to go for, what things you want to trigger. Um, do you want to try to invade uh, the UK? You can really, to me, it's the best way to describe it, it feels like you're role-playing at a strategic level. You're not locked in. It's not a simulation. It is much more purely a game. Uh, let me show you the basic turn. I will briefly go through the actions that you can take, including not just Barbarossa, but Overlord and Bagration in 44. Uh, but the simple game, the thing you'll be doing the most of is what I'm going to show you and just keep it clean, short, simple. All right, I'm going to show a couple of event cards, and then I'm going to go in and show how all these are won and how land spaces are won. But I wanted you to see some of them. So First, you can just simply see you can get generals, you can get like the desperate gamble, which is going to allow you to do some special things in here. I'm not going to read all of these things. Uh, they can do things like uh, allow you to convert dice, add extra dice. Um, Iraqi revolt, you can see, if I can get it to fo focus, place control marker in the Iraq, uh, decrease allied hand size. So you can take a control marker, put it on the board, and you can move uh, the allied hand size down, so that would come in. Uh, Wolfpack is great. Decrease allied hand size. If I can get it to focus again. So again, you're going to be able to pull that hand size down 
um, and minus one random enemy cards. So you're going to get to pull one of their cards out. The other thing to show, now I'm using the German cards, but you can also see there are types of, there's all these little icons, some of which are airborne or blitzkrieg, um, some different meanings, but the most specific are some of these little icons here, and I'm going to put a little graphic up now, which shows you reusable, returnable, removable, Recyclable. I found it interesting that they had all R's there. Um, and then real briefly, what those do. So the win-lose is reusable. If you win that conflict, you'll get to keep that card. If you lose it, it goes back. Returnable with this little bar. After you use it, win-lose, whatever, doesn't matter. Boom, it goes back into the invent deck. So you can, you can get it again later. But you're only going to get that one use, and it just goes back into the deck. A removable event, so the Iraqi Revolt, if you win the card that you're trying to get, you'll do it immediately, and then it comes out of the game. And then recyclable, it's got that little symbol there. After you use it, you put it in the box top. It literally tells you, put it in the box top, uh, because there are times that the events may become available again, either during a reshuffle or uh, depending on the cards, sometimes you can get it back at, at the end of that year. So using the exact same cards, um, again, I would have this whole stack. And these are all open for view. So I could just thumb through and be like, you know, okay, I want to grab some landing craft. I can do whatever. I can go through and look at all of these cards. And you'll get to know them fairly well. And that's part of, not part of, it's a huge part of the game because it's all in how do you want to use these events. Um, you are not restricted to following exactly what history uh, did, but let's just use these. So let's just say I want to get this general in my hand. Um, I'm going to grab it out of the whole stack of the event cards. I've decided to take that action, that event action. So this is what we're going to fight over. So how do we fight? Well, this is your hand size. So there's a box up here that tracks what your hand size is. The Germans start off with a bigger hand size of eight. Uh, the Allies start off with a hand size of six. They look the same on this side, but they're different over here. Now I've got um, the double agent up. We'll cover that in a second. But the things to look for are this. Think of this as like a dice value. That's worth 10. We have two. We have one. But you can see the private will lose ties. So we're going to be picking a card that we're going to play down for its point value. There are little things like lose ties, or uh, this happens to also be uh, Italian, so you'll see we have, uh, this is for any of them, the double agent cards can end up in either deck. Uh, you can see the Saboteur does a cool thing, it's going to lose ties, but it reduces uh, the enemy card that was chosen also to a strength of one. So let's just show how that works. Um, Let's say, um, okay, I have this big 13 card. If I really want the event, so if I really wanted that, I'm going to play this down secretly, all right? But let's say I was like, man, I don't have any big cards in my hand, but I want to neuter whatever my opponent, the allies, have. I'll play this down secretly. So again, it's only going to be worth a value of one. I could have played all these other ones that have these different values, and this one wins ties, win ties. All right, you can reroll up to three axis dice uh, after resolving the event, so that's beautiful on a reroll also, the value of 13. That's played down secretly. All right, then the allies have a choice. All right, they can come in and play their double agent. You can see here. If uh, one enemy, 11, 12, or 13, so the bigger, higher number cards, forfeits uh, all of uh, their re-roll roll abilities. So if he thought, bam, I'm, you know, if allies think, man, I've probably got a 13 or an 11 or a 12, I really want this, that's what I, I put down, uh, he may want to come in and try to counter it because of the re-roll ability. But let's just do something a little simpler. So the Major General is worth 10. This is what he wants to play. We can't get it in focus. So if available, allies must play a red star card when attacking, defending uh, from a Soviet area. So really, really clearly placed. This hasn't happened yet. We're not in the Russian area attacks. But it's a limitation that if I do, uh, Barbarossa, that whenever there's an attack going on in Russian area, 
I have to play the Russian cards if I have them. It's a little limiting factor. So again, this is played down blindly. All right, we would both have them down. It's uh, the axis is turned. They're trying to get this event. They're going to resolve the conflict. So we flip. I've got a one. Uh, he's going to have a ten. All right, but it's knocked down to a one because that's what the saboteur does. It would have retained any special abilities it had, so rerolls or whatever, or winning ties. But now we're dealing with one on one, and in a normal conflict, you're going to come in with just three dice. Now you can end up with four, you can end up with five, but it's just going to be three and we would both roll off at the same time. So it's one and one and we simply do a roll off. All right, we've got 10, that was a six, hello, and clearly 16. And then you would add in whatever your card base is. Again, it's only one. Axis would win. They simply have, have won their action and this card goes into the hand of events that they can play on a turn. And the majority of what you do on your turn is this simple battle roll off. If we weren't playing for an event, I could have done an attack and I could just say Axis is going to come in. I would use like whatever the attack is and I'm going to attack Yugoslavia. I want to come in and do an attack on Yugoslavia. I could play event cards. All right, there's a whole function where I'm going to play an event card if I wanted to. Generally, you want to. It's going to allow me to do something cool, special, unique. I'll show you a few of those before we end this look at the board. Uh, we would do the same process of selecting cards to go down. There are occasions that some events will even force a player to play their uh, conflict card face up first, allowing me to then adjust to whatever they have. And then you have the cool faction of, even if I've played, let's say I've played something, I've just played the sergeant. So I'm going to win ties, but it's a lowly four. He's played a major, major general, it's worth 10. Obviously, he's got a huge advantage when we go to do the roll off. Let's assume there were no events played that allow extra dice to be added. That's all in there. I could have up to five dice, but now we do the roll. I still have the option that I could have a phenomenal roll and win the conflict, or uh, the allies could have a terrible roll and almost negate their whole uh, point value that comes in. So you, this is the heart of the game. You're literally battling over areas, battling for event cards, um, there's some special things where you may be doing uh, a big push, allows you to really get your forces together, hit twice, uh, basically you're taking two event actions, you can take two attack uh, actions. Uh, there's special operations, which again are Barbarossa, Overlord, Bagration. Uh, it's real easy when you get to those, uh, you can simply do what I did, pull out the manual and say, okay, we're going to walk through uh, one of these three specials. And if you're playing the intro in 41, you're only going to be dealing with Barbarossa. One of the very neat things um, is that if, if Barbarossa isn't triggered before the Axis empty their deck, so on a, on a round, I've played one card, it'll get discarded, I'll refill back up to my hand size, currently eight. Um, when this deck that I'm drawing from is exhausted, if I haven't, as the Axis player, initiated Barbarossa, I will not be initiating it throughout the rest of the game. Cool. Awesome, even. So, so again, you, the main action you're going to be doing is these little battles uh, with event cards, adjusting your rules, with you playing down your conflict cards, with you doing your dice roll off. But there's little special things you can do, and then I'm going to exit out into my final thoughts. If you don't like the cards that you have in your hand, if you don't like what you've got, you have a chance, uh, you can only do it once per year that you're in, but you can do a reorganize, which is just discard uh, cards that you don't like, and then do a refresh action. action. You can fortify different spaces on, on uh, the board. Uh, you can reinforce by putting uh, fleet markers, which are just these long, if I can grab one, rectangular wooden pieces down in uh, ocean spots, um, or during a reinforce, you can actually get a big push action. All the big push allows you to do is conduct multiple actions in one turn. So you can do 
two event actions or you can do two attack actions. So there are a few exceptions throughout the rules, but they're really not that hard uh, to deal with. So I've zoomed in on part of Russia. The first thing you're going to notice is Moscow has uh, production centers with two oil cans. Taking uh, capitals is one of the victory locations. I'm going to cover all the victory locations quick, but you can see the track to cover hand size black. Uh, the black uh, like hexagon cube is uh, the current hand size of the axis and the allies are at six. You can if I can reduce my opponent's hand size uh, to zero, I win. It's an automatic sudden death victory. If I have my hand size all the way up at 12 down at the bottom, and I have my opponent at three or less, I win. If Berlin is captured by uh, the allies, and on the Axis' next turn, they can't retake the uh, Berlin, that's a loss. Axis loses. Now if London and Moscow are both captured and on the very next turn the Allies can't retake at least one of those two, they don't have to have both, but if they can't take at least one of those two then the Germans will win. Depending on the historical scenario uh, there are uh, time limit victories in place too so the game can't just keep going and going and going and then that one you have to go look and hey which scenario am I using? My time victory locations are X. So it's very, very crucial, this hand size and these production centers. And, and knowing that that is your focus going in, you, you kind of know, hey, a lot of these event cards are knocking down the hand size. And what's nice on a historical standpoint is the Germans start off with the advantage in hand size and a few more event cards that they already have in their deck. And the allies are behind. But as you move into 44, everything is flipped. All right, so final thoughts. So the big hit on it was, on, on Hitler's Reich, is that the rule book made it hard to learn. And that at its, at its heart is a simple, simple game. I'll agree with that. I think GMT's already agreed with that. I don't know um, who did Skies Above the Reich, but this production level rules explanation via all the helper aids and then pointing to the pages was brilliant. You're in and playing this without reading the rule book. So whoever did that, maybe it's even the same person. They're just trying new stuff. I don't know. But it shows you what production can do. Um, so beautifully done here. Unbelievably done. Go watch my review of this where I go on and on about how easy the, the entry is. Here, yeah, a little bit of a misstep because the base of the game, misstep just on the rules explanation alone. I'm going to get to the point that I think it's a total hit for an upper level high strategic game that's game over simulation. Hit out of the park on that. Why I think the rule book got a little lost in the weeds is that the base game is dirt simple. You've got a hand of cards that are point values. You're going to play one of those down. There's some special things that that card may allow you to do. You may just win ties. You may lose ties. You may be able to reroll dice. There's events that will be played that can change things around, and it's all explained right on the card. But you're playing your one card down. Your opponent's playing their one card down. Events may change things. You're either going for an event to bring in that you can play in the future or trigger immediately, or you're fighting somewhere on the map. You then just roll dice. You roll the dice, you add up, you figure out whatever the event cards, if they were played, do. You figure out whatever happens in ties or re-rolling of dice or whatever goes on, and you're done. It's like that simple. Where some of the minutia comes in is, you're, are you going to get a bonus action? Um, is this a blitzkrieg? Are you doing a big operation like Barbarossa? And those are different enough that they do take a little bit of, okay, I got a grok it, what is it? But the baseline game is so simple. You're doing that, you're doing that again, and then you're doing that again. Whoop, oh, hold on. I'm going to trigger Barbarossa. Let me double check on how to do it. Make sure I do it right. I'm going to get a bonus action. But when do I get bonus actions? Well, you got to win your regular action, but not if you did a reinforce or a fortify. Okay, okay, fine. But really what you're doing is 
picking out a la carte your events. I want that. Check your symbology out. That was a little weird to me at first as well. Hey, is it reusable, returnable, recyclable? I forget the other R. Quite simple though, there's a page with it pictured. I even took a picture and had it on my phone so I could just look at it without even have to flip the page, hello. And then declare what you wanna do, play your event. If you wanna play an event that you own, follow whatever those rules are, pick your card, opponent picks their card, dice roll it, it's done. Do your little cleanup, whatever, other person's turn. It's simple, 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 simple. Um, so, um, as far as a card conquest system goes, this brand new card conquest system game, I think it's brilliant because my feel after I was done playing, I remember just sitting there thinking, how do I describe this? Um, because it's a game, not a simulation, number one. So know that going in. Two, I really, I like role-playing games. And I started to sit here and say, this feels like a strategic level role-playing game. The events are here a la carte. Now again, some things are dependent on the year, but that's very few. So I can pick and choose what I want to do. There's this growth space to the game that I can start thinking, oh, I could see where I might be able to focus on uh, like an Operation Sea Lion, where I'm going, I think it was Sea Lion, hopefully I'm right on that, where I'm going to attack and try to invade England and see if I can get that done. But I need landing craft to do this and things. And you're clearly kind of showing your opponent, oh, I think he's going to try to do that. Oh, my. But you might, it might be a feint and you're really trying to do this. So there's that game play space that I enjoy with the, all the sprinkling of the historical events with the simple action of your conflict cards, uh, the double agent card being in there and how the different cards uh, move things around and how they interact with events, you have a, a strategic level play space with all the history I know from World War II being flavored in and me able to use it in different unique ways that are not always going to be historical. Perfect. And done in a quick hour, maybe two, as you're playing with the option of a very easy to follow card that does the bot. So I can play it solitaire, have it up on the table and just kind of tinker with it when I wish and try different strategies. Yes, yes, yes. I think this system can be used um, in multiple different genres. So Ancients, World War One. what do we want to do? A fictional World War Three would be kind of neat. Um, I can just, my mind kind of went and I thought, ah, okay, let's just stay with this. But I can see where they could go with this system. It's very, very light, very, very simple. That is it. And there's Reich.